Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about new makeup that I am not buying and the reasons why. Now, this isn't just some random makeup I'm mentioning in this video. These are products that truly tempted me. From a seeing myself wearing these products perspective, very tempted. And from the perspective of using these products for content and to create videos with, obviously also very tempted and so I wanted to put them in this video it's going to be a bit of a good old anti-haul type of video and I'm going to explain to you why I decided to go against them starting next week with the Sephora sale coming up I'm going to be doing a lot of makeup reviews and I'm going to be doing a lot of suggesting products to you so let's go ahead and just enjoy this moment of makeup that we are not buying at least I'm not buying if you are buying any of what I'm going to mention let me know down in the comment section and let's just go ahead and get started I'm going to scroll over this way as if I were doing a will I buy it video which obviously I'm not buying any of these right but I want to put pictures right here next to me and I obviously don't have any of these makeup products so the first product that I am not buying and I've been very very tempted to buy is this makeup forever HD skin cream contour and highlighting sculpting palette it looks glorious doesn't it <laughs> and I know for a fact that makeup forever has amazing formulas incredible formulas that I would truly enjoy. This palette is $85, which you are getting a lot of product for. And from a me reviewing makeup products perspective, I feel like a lot of people would maybe be interested in this palette because it has a bunch of different skin tones in there. It would match a lot of people. We could kind of customize the different colors on our face to create the perfect look for us and all of that. However, I have resisted all of those temptations and I am not buying this palette. And the reason I'm not buying it is because I no longer want to subscribe to palettes that are made for makeup artists. I no longer do makeup on other people and so if I were to buy this palette just for me to use it on myself, majority of the products in there would absolutely go to waste, no doubt about it. Plus, if I would make it a point to use it as much as I could intentionally so that I would get use out of it, then I would be neglecting a lot of products that I have in my collection that I love and that I also want to make sure that I'm using. So for those reasons, I'm not buying this Makeup Forever palette here. I feel like this would be an amazing palette for a working makeup artist because you have a ton of different colors in there that you can customize for a lot of different complexions. I feel like those are the people who should be buying this palette, but me as a consumer who would only be using this palette on my face, I just don't think it's worth it. And so I don't suggest you buy it for that reason. Unless you're a makeup artist and you need it for your kit, in which case, by all means, please grab it. But other than that, just don't buy into the hype. You don't need this palette. Moving on to the next product. And the next product is one that a year ago, I feel like I would have been jumping off joy to grab and that is this product right here from Huda Beauty. This is the new Huda Beauty Glowish Bright Light Hydrating Sheer. Sheer is that's the main word we want to listen to. Sheer concealer. And the reason that I'm not buying this one even though I know that if I were to make a video on it I feel like it would probably maybe get a good amount of views and whatnot is because I do not like sheer concealers they just don't work for my skin i like glowy concealers but i cannot do sheer concealers i have dark under eye circles i have purple hues underneath my eyes and i know for a fact that no matter how natural i want to look <laughs> a sheer concealer just would not work for me because I would just look naturally tired, right? Because it would not cover my under eye circles at all. I feel like the only person I would recommend to get this concealer for would maybe be like a teenager, a person that has like this perfect skin, no under eye circles, and just wants like a little bit of brightness underneath the eye. And someone who like barely wears any makeup and wants to look very natural all the time, maybe that person would take advantage of a sheer concealer like this one. But me personally, I don't care how glowy it is. We don't want to highlight 
the purple under eyes, right? <laughs> so also definitely not grabbing this one and it is so, so rare that I skip on a Huda Beauty release because I love the Huda Beauty brand. I love talking about her new product releases. I feel like her brand has a lot of products that I use all the time and that have become staples in my collection. And so it's so rare that I skip on a Huda Beauty release, but I just don't see myself liking this one or wanting to wear this product at all. And so for that reason, it is not coming home with me. <laughs> Okay, this next product I want to mention is being so freaking heavily sponsored, at least on Instagram. I don't know if it's been sponsored on YouTube. I have seen a lot of sponsorships for it though on my Instagram feed. And this product I am also not interested in the slightest to try. And I'm talking about the Ule Henriksen Banana Bright Plus Vitamin CC Sticks. This comes in a whopping three different shades and it's supposed to be an under eye brightener with skincare ingredients in it. All I can tell you about this is that even on those sponsored posts that I have seen where people are talking about all of the positives of this product, applying it underneath the eye and showing it, it does not look good. It doesn't match anyone, it doesn't really cover much, and it looks like a thick product that is just laying on top of your skin under the eye area. In fact, if we look at the Sephora pictures, not even the picture of the product being applied on the model space, it looks good. And you can see that this picture is edited, not even on the edited picture, it looks good. Because once they blended it out in order to leave enough coverage underneath the eye, you can see where the CC stick corrector thing ends right here and her natural skin starts. It just doesn't blend smoothly. I guess that's the yeast of it. In all of the sponsored posts I've seen for it, be it videos or images, it does not look like a product that blends smoothly. And so for that reason, I'm not interested in it in the slightest. I would be very, very curious if any of you have tried this product and it works for you. So if that is the case, please correct me down in the comment section. It just does not look attractive to me. The next product is an eyeshadow palette from one of my favorite brands that I am skipping on. I'm talking about Rare Beauty, which you guys know I love reviewing Rare Beauty products. But Rare Beauty is coming out with the Discovery eyeshadow palette in Give Yourself Grace, I think it's what it's called. And even though I love the Rare Beauty brand, I'm just not a big fan of their eyeshadow palettes. My favorite shades from these palettes are the shades that are not the middle shade, the shades that are around. And I find that even though the outside of the packaging is amazing, I find that, that the little half moons where they put the shades in are kind of hard to get into. Like the brush doesn't quite fit in there. So I find that to be a bit uncomfortable to work with. And then the biggest shade, the center of attention of this palette is this super chunky glittery shade that they put in the middle. And it's not like a Pat McGrath like Blitz Astral shade or like one of these Adept Cosmetics shiny glittery shades or anything like that. It's like the old style eye glitters, like the ones you would find in the Tati palette, for example. Those chunky, chunky glitters, which I used to love the Tati palette, but I feel like we have better formulas now, right? So I'm no longer interested in the very, very chunky glitters because I find that there's so many other glitters on the market that I like a lot better, that are easier to apply, that don't fall all over your face, etc. And so because that chunky glitter that I don't love is kind of like the main thing in that palette and everything else is kind of hard to get into anyways. I am not buying this palette. In fact, I probably won't buy any more of this palette as long as they have it in this type of packaging because I just don't love this type of packaging. I wish they went back to the packaging with just like the regular rectangular shadows that they had at the very, very beginning of the brand. So skipping on this one, which is a shame because it's not even an expensive palette. This palette is only $29, which is a really nice price. And I do love the outside packaging of it. But like I said, I don't like the way that the shades are laid out inside. And I also don't like that big chunky glitter. Maybe if they change the big chunky glitter, I will purchase one of these palettes in the future. We'll see. Okay, so the next product I'm not buying is a Natasha Denona palette. I know, I know. Probably shocking, um, but maybe also not so much. The palette is the Love Face Eyeshadow and Cheek Essential Palette from Natasha Denona. If this palette were to have launched 
the regular way. I probably would have bought it in order to review it for you, right? Because there's nothing that I don't like about this palette just seeing it. But this palette had a very weird way of launching. It got leaked at the beginning of February in a website. It was there for maybe an hour or two. I missed the leak because I was sleeping. <laughs> and then I kept waiting and waiting and waiting because I wanted to buy this palette, right? I kept waiting for it to launch and it being named the Love Palette. I thought it was going to launch before Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day came and went and this palette literally did not launch until the end of February, by which time everyone who had bought the palette during the leak had reviewed it and it honestly didn't get great reviews at all. Most people I watched did not like this palette and so for all of those reasons combined, it was a product release that I skipped and that I'm not planning to buy. Not even during the Sephora sale, which I did think about. I was like, well, the Sephora sale is coming, maybe I'll buy it 20% off. Should I? <laughs> No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I am not buying this palette. <laughs> no, right? I don't need it, right? I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. 20% off? Okay, I'm 90% convinced that I am not buying this palette. I just thought about it and I was like, well, with a discount, mate. No, no. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Ever since I tried Freck Beauty and my slimy primer that I have been loving, I have become a little bit more interested in the line because I'm like, this product is so amazing. What else do they have to offer? One of the products I am interested in buying from them, by the way, is their moisturizer because it feels amazing. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get it yet. I feel like I have to try it a little further, but it feels amazing, so that might be a product that I do end up getting. Now, the product I wanna tell you about that I am not buying is the new bronzer that they came out with. It is called the Face Hack Precision Sculpting Cream Bronzer. This is what it looks like right here. It has a funny packaging to it. Like I said, I tried something I liked from the brand, so I'm going to try to experience more things that they launched to see if I like other products they come out with, but this product is not going to be it. And the reason why is honestly very simple. It says that in the title, it's a precision sculpting cream, yet all of the lighter shades that they came out with of this precision sculpting bronzer are warm. And I don't like warm bronzers that much. Plus, if they are warm, they are not sculpting. So I feel like there's a lie in the title, you know? And maybe it's not a lie for everyone because I'm seeing that the darker shades in this bronzing product are pretty cool toned, but all of the shades that I'm seeing towards the lighter half of the spectrum are very, very warm shades that I don't feel like would sculpt me at all. They seem to be just really nice bronzy shades and for that I have my Rare Beauty bronzer, okay? I don't need this one. I am not going to buy it. I was tempted. It's only $18. I just realized I was thinking it would probably be around 25 to 30. It's only 18, but I'm still not buying it because I just don't think I'm going to like it just by looking at the pictures. It just looks way, way, way too warm for me. Two more products to go. Both of them are luxury. And the first one that I was tempted by is from Dior. Dior just launched their like summer collection and majority of the products didn't even tingle. Like they were just like meh, meh, easy skip, right? Don't want it. More bronzers. Why are they coming out with a bronzer collection every year? Every year Dior comes out with a bronzer collection and a highlighter collection. I don't get it and I'm not interested and I'm not buying it. I do have a bronzer from Dior I bought a couple of years ago that I absolutely love, but it doesn't make me want to get a bronzer a year from Dior. Like just have a bronzer collection and stick with it or something. I don't know. Anyways, you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of Dior to begin with. I do love some of their products, but they're like very specific products. I love their foundations, that's for sure. And then every once in a while, they'll come out with a product that I'm very interested in and sometimes I try it and I love it and it is great. Their lip oils, for example, amazing. Anyways, let me get to the point. The product that really, really tempted me from this collection was the Quint. It's the new Dior Show Eyeshadow Quint in the shade 233 Eden Rock. 
and it looks like a summer vacation in a palette. It's got all of the sandy shades of the beach with the brown shade of a coconut and the blue of the sea, okay? That's the way I see it in my mind, that palette. Total beach vibes, total vacation vibes. And so for that reason, I was very tempted by it. I really do love the color story. I love the sandy shades. I love that deep blue that they incorporated into the palette. Now, the reason I'm not buying it is because Dior is a luxury brand. We know that. We know that their quints are $65. We know that. Which is, by the way, if we want to compare it to a brand that we all love, the same price of a... Natasha Denona midi palette. This right here, this beautiful thing right here, $65. That little thing right there, same price, also $65. Now, even though I was very, very tempted by this color story because again, I saw it and I was like, that's it, I'm on vacation. I have a coconut in my hand, I'm looking at the ocean and my feet right now, they're on the sand, right? Plus the palette is the size of a travel size palette too, so we could totally take it on vacation. I'm sure that was the purpose for which it was created. Now, if we really look at this palette in the color story and we take away the deep blue shade, you are left with the most basic colors ever. You have a couple of browns of different depths and you have a warmy type transition shade and then like a very tropical sand light type of color. And I am 100% sure that not me, because I have a large makeup collection, but majority of people, if you have three to four eyeshadow palettes total, you probably already have shades very, very similar to these. And then the only special-ish maybe type of color is that deep blue shade, which it's also kind of not that special. It's pretty, I can appreciate it, but it's also kind of not that special. I'm sure that I could dupe that one as well. Um, and there's also a lot of different shades of blue that you may have in your collection that could get you a similar look to that one. It looks like a very classy palette. I can definitely appreciate it from a distance, but I have convinced myself that I am not going to be purchasing this one. Last but not least, I was also extremely tempted by a Chanel Quad. This Chanel Quad is so beautiful, it's so springy, it's so girly and ethereal, just beautiful. I think it's called Delices or something like that. You guys are looking at the picture, it looks absolutely beautiful. Now, you must know, Chanel Quads are like $80, I believe. I was bit by a couple of those last year did not end up well. <laughs> so $80 for the quad and then the performance of Chanel quads have not impressed me in the past. Now with this one I feel like I wouldn't expect to get a lot of vibrancy in the colors because like I said it's a very ethereal springy color story but even then, even then I am not tempted enough with this one to spend $80 on a quad, knowing how badly I was bit by the Tweed collection last year. I just cannot let myself fall in the hype again. The palette, by the way, I don't think it's available online, at least not yet. I'm not sure if it's available at Nordstrom or when it would be available at Nordstrom. Right now I'm on the Chanel website and it says to visit a Chanel boutique near you. And I'm not even going to look at reviews of these because last year with the Tweed collection, I looked at other reviews and people were liking the Tweed collection. And I hated that so bad. Plus, like I said, I know that some high-end and luxury eyeshadow brands are totally worth the price tag, but I also know that this Chanel eyeshadow quad is definitely not going to be worth $80, at least not for me. And that one was actually the last product I wanted to talk about. Let me know what you think of these products that I'm skipping on and whether you got any of these and how you're liking it. I am very, very curious to hear about it. If you guys like this video, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave. And I'm getting ready for a lot of Sephora sale content next week, so make sure to please subscribe before you leave. Here's a couple other videos on my channel you might like and want to check out. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you back in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>